If you've been taking supplements, practicing meditation, or even trying therapy but still feeling anxious, it might not just be about what you are or aren't doing. It could be about your genetics. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the key anxiety genes that may be shaping how your brain responds to stress, and more importantly, what you can do about it. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Giselle Rosa, a board certified psychiatric nurse practitioner here to help you optimize your mental health through genetics and integrative and functional medicine using a skills before pills approach. So let's start with our stress chemistry, the COMT and MAOA genes. So let's start with two genes that regulate how quickly your brain clears stress chemicals, your COMT and MAOA genes. COMT breaks down dopamine, norepinephrine, and epinephrine, the very chemicals that surge when you're under stress. And if you carry the slow version of the COMT gene, these stress chemicals linger longer in your system, which can heighten anxiety, overthinking, and your sensitivity to stress. Now on the flip side, the fast version of COMT clears them more quickly which can blunt your stress responses, but sometimes leave you low on dopamine, feeling less motivated. Now, MAOA is similar to COMT, but it also influences serotonin along with dopamine and norepinephrine metabolism. And variants that slow down your MAOA can leave you with higher baseline levels of these neurotransmitters. And for some people, this will translate to mood instability, irritability, and higher risks of anxiety disorders, where faster versions of MAOA may protect against overload, but can contribute to lower mood resilience. And so finding the right balance is actually what really matters with these two genes. And so next up are our serotonin receptors, specifically the 5-HT2A and HTR1A genes. These genes help determine how sensitive your brain is to serotonin, the neurotransmitter often called the calming or feel-good chemical. You see, variants in the 5-HT2A are tied to panic disorder, OCD, and an exaggerated stress response. And people with certain versions of this gene may have higher receptor density, which makes serotonin signaling more intense. So it's almost like the stress switches are stuck in the on position. The HTR1A variants are linked to generalized anxiety, and this receptor usually works like a thermostat for serotonin release, dialing it back when enough is present. But if you have an inefficient version, it can blunt that feedback mechanism, meaning that serotonin's calming signal doesn't always land the way that it should, leaving you more prone to worry and tension. Now together, these receptor genes will help explain why two people will have the same serotonin levels, but very different responses to anxiety. Now let's look at your brain's natural brake pedal, GABA. This neurotransmitter tells your nervous system to slow down, relax, and restore balance. Two key genes influence this system, the GAD1 and the GABA2. GAD1 is responsible for making GABA from glutamate the brain's main excitatory neurotransmitter. If GAD1 is less efficient, your brain may struggle to produce enough GABA, leaving you wired instead of calm. GABA2 affects how well your GABA receptors respond to the calming signal. And variants here are linked not just to anxiety, but also with insomnia and even alcohol dependence as some people will seek outside substances to calm their nervous system. So if you've ever felt like your body just won't hit the brakes no matter what, these genes might explain why. Finally, let's talk about two genes that shape the bigger picture of how your brain circuits fire and how you connect with others. Your CACNA1C and OXTR genes. CACNA1C codes for a calcium channel that regulates how excitable your neurons are. And variants in this gene have been strongly linked to anxiety and mood disorders. So think of it as the volume knob for your brain cells. When it's turned up too high, your system can actually become overstimulated, 
fueling anxiety and racing thoughts. OXTR is the oxytocin receptor gene, and oxytocin is often called the bonding hormone because it helps regulate trust, social connection, and fear responses. And variants in the OXTR can actually make it harder to feel secure in relationships or to calm down after stress, which raises the risk of social anxiety. So now let's move on to practical tips. So what can you do if you carry some of these gene variants? First, remember that genes are not your destiny. They're more like dimmer switches that can be tuned by your lifestyle and your environment. Some practical tips with COMPT and MAOA genes would be to practice regular aerobic exercise as this helps balance stress chemicals in both slow and fast variants. For slow COMPT, limit or even avoid caffeine and stimulants because they can amplify stress overload. For a fast comp, consider foods rich in tyrosine like poultry, cheese, and pumpkin seeds to support dopamine production. For MAOA sensitivity, emphasize complex carbohydrates and consistent meals to stabilize serotonin and use therapies like cognitive behavior therapy to retrain stress patterns. Now, when it comes to the 5-HT2A and HTR1A genes, some practical tips here would be first to prioritize your gut health. So eat high fiber foods, probiotics, and fermented foods if you can tolerate them since much of your serotonin is made in the gut. You also wanna ensure sufficient vitamin D as low levels of vitamin D are often linked with serotonin receptor inefficiency. You also wanna make sure to practice regular stress management, like yoga or breath work, which can help reset serotonin sensitivity and avoid the overuse of tryptophan-heavy supplements if you carry the high expression 5-HT2A variant. Now, tips for GAD1 and GABA2. You wanna support GABA production with vitamin B6 and magnesium as both are cofactors in this pathway. You can also try calming teas or herbs like valerian, lemon balm, or chamomile, which can naturally enhance GABA signaling. However, if you're taking a benzodiazepine like lorazepam, ativan, clonazepam, clonopin, or diazepam, valium, etc., or you're tapering a benzodiazepine, you'll want to be careful with over-enhancing GABA to avoid reactions. You also want to reduce or avoid caffeine and alcohol as they disrupt GABA activity and will worsen anxiety. It would also be important to practice consistent sleep hygiene since GABA levels rise at night to promote rest. And finally, some tips for the CACNA1C and OXTR genes. For CACNA1C, stabilize your nervous system with omega-3 fatty acids from fish or algae oil and regular exercise, which help regulate neuronal excitability. You could also consider using low-dose lithium orotate, which can also help with neuronal excitability. For OXTR gene variants, prioritize healthy social connections, spend time with trusted friends, join supportive groups, or even try safe touch practices like massage. Practices like EMDR, mindfulness meditation, or guided breath work can also help to rewire the brain's stress response and support oxytocin balance. And it's also important to limit overstimulation from screens and late night blue light to keep your neuronal excitability down. And so here are my final thoughts. Your anxiety genes don't doom you. They reveal where your vulnerabilities may lie. And by supporting your neurotransmitter balance, calming your nervous system, and nurturing social bonds, you can create a buffer against anxiety. So if you found this helpful, check out my video on dopamine genes. It dives into motivation, reward, and why some people crave stimulation more than others. And if you'd like to discover your own genetic blueprint for anxiety, focus, and mood, I offer a personalized genetic test. The link is in the description below. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.